welcome my dear students to chips and game for rats in today's class we shall be dealing with three bone tumors i have deliberately chosen these three names the osteosarcoma heaving sarcoma and osteoclastoma mainly what we should have in mind will be a gross picture the microscopic picture and the radiological picture for each of them secondly in one corner of our mind we should have a clinical picture in registration because it is important for a history and diagnosis with this introduction i'll go to the topic proper normal things first so the bone is made up of trabeculae it is called a lamellar bone layer after layer of bone is being laid down we call it a lamellar bone it is laid down by cells called osteoblasts and as they lay down the bony matrix they become mature and they are surrounded by the matrix in the meantime they become mature they are called osteocytes osteoblast osteocytes similarly when excess bone is to be removed there is a multinucleate giant cell called osteoclast this we shall be having in a corner of our mind the three tumors i mentioned we shall go to the osteoclastoma first it is called osteoclastoma because we are finding multiple osteoclasts like giant cells it is otherwise called giant cell tumor of bone and the origin of it is supposed to be unknown so you can boldly answer this question what is a gross picture a gross picture of it is definitely to be kept in any of the medical colleges for the undergraduates or even the post graduates the common locations will be in the region of the epiphysis epiphysis is the extreme end of the bone and it is limited by an epiphyseal plate this is a tumor that i am seeing and this is also a tumor it can occur at the lower end of the femur the upper end of the tibia or the upper end of the humerus these are common sites for osteoclastoma and the age is usually 30 years or so the patient presents with an expansive lesion look at this one something is bulging like a club so the books will be describing it as a club shaped lesion and radiologically also you will be finding an expansive lesion here i am finding a tumor that is replacing almost the entire epiphyseal limb the cortex becomes thinned out and it is very thin so very thin as an eggshell and when you touch or palpate also you get a sound that is called an eggshell crackling fortunately the epiphyseal plate is intact a club shaped lesion at the epiphysis 30 years of age and when we cut it across i find that there are multiple areas of hemorrhage so this i think we people can make out in between there will be this is a bone that i am finding so there are bony trabeculae that could be seen in between the rest of it is all the tumor there are also areas of hemorrhage obviously this redness i can make so this is an appearance that we people can see when you go to the x ray look at this one being reflected i showed you that there will be thin bony trabeculae over here that is what we are seeing there is an expansive club shaped lesion with thinning of the cortex 
and multiple osteolytic lacunae which are seen in between. The entire one is the giant cell tumor at the epiphysis. So this is very simple for us. What about the microscopy? This picture is good enough. I find that there are multiple giant cells. When I look at it under the low power, probably this might be focused for you in the examination. You find that there are multiple giant cells. Giant cells will be having numerous nuclei and they are all evenly spaced. Whichever part of the slide you take, there will be a good number of giant cells and they are all evenly spaced. Now you will go to the higher magnification. So these are all the giant cells. They are evenly spaced. They contain multiple nuclei, 50 to 100. These bluish circles are all the nuclei. This is again just to bring your attention to. In between, I am finding spindle-shaped cells or round cells, which is supposed to be the stroma and which is the tumor. This is reactive, whereas this is the tumor form. As the tumor becomes more immature, there will be less of giant cells, more of the stroma, more of pleomorphs. But again, behavior-wise, it is a locally recurrent tumor, 30 years of age. So this is one good diagram, which is showing us the epiphysis, the diaphysis, and the metaphysis. So, in the metaphysis, there are some tumors in which I am having the heaving sarcoma. Lower down, in the diaphysis, there can be a tumor, such as the osteosarcoma over here. And then there can be the giant cell tumor at the epiphysis. The other things you people can go through. Just a distribution. There are other tumors which can have giant cells such as an aneurysmal bone cyst or a chondroblastoma, go back to my class and you will be able to identify it. The next tumor that we are going to see is the heaving sarcoma. The heaving sarcoma occurs at another extreme of age, 10 to 15 years. It hardly occurs beyond to 20 years of age. So 10 years can be a good average. And it occurs in the metaphysis. How do I remember the metaphysis, epiphysis, and diaphysis? The epiphyseal end of the metaphysis is called diaphysis. So this is what I am seeing. The tumor is supposed to be occurring in the medullary cavity. There is an expansion of the bone and it almost starts bulging outside. Also, I find that there is a parallel laying down of new bone that is there. This radiologically, we call it as an onion skin appearance. Look at this one. This is what we are seeing. And the tumor, it generally does not penetrate or break the bone, but there is an expansive lesion. The common complaint will be pain and fever, which we can mistake for an osteomyelitis. And microscopically, it is composed of, look at all these cells, the blue one or the nuclei, I'm hardly able to see any cytoplasm. So it is called a small blue round cell tumor. There are other tumors also, that is why it is grouped like this. Sometimes you find that they are arranged around an imaginary space called a rosette. So this is a rosette over here, and the tumors are all arranged around it. We call it a homorite rosette, which can be present in an evening sarcoma. Also, you find that there can be extensive areas of necrosis. The tumor is able to survive only where there is blood supply. It is called a survival pattern. The other round cell tumors are, to mention a few, neuroblastoma and a lymphoma. The cells will be containing a lot of glycogen and when I use a special stain called PAS, it stains them pink. So this is a stain that can be used. The rest of the chromosomal abnormalities, the viral etiology, etc., you people can go back to the book or my classes and read them. 
incidentally one thing is there is a soap bubble appearance in the giant cell tube the last tumor for the day will be the osteosarcoma an extremely important tumor the full name actually should be osteogenic sarcoma osteogenesis the tumor lays down bone that is why it is called osteogenic sarcoma it is a common tumor that occurs in the metaphyses so there is a diaphysis over here there is epiphysis in between you have got the metaphyses the tumor arises from within the medullary cavity and then it erodes the cortical bone it erodes the cortical bone there is an elevation of the periosteum periosteum is a covering of the and this is radiologically reflected as a cordman's triangle so look at the triangular appearance the elevation of the periosteum which you see here also which is a cordman's triangle the common sites are the lower end of the femur the upper end of the tibia upper end of the humerus etc it rarely occurs in flat bones except in a case of paget's disease of the bone where it can occur in the flat bones there it will be occurring around 40 40 by years of age here it is usually 20 years of age please remember it like this 10 years is evings 20 years is osteogenic 30 years is osteoplastic coming to the histologic gross picture i find that it is infiltrating and the entire surrounding region is being infiltrated by the tumor here also the epiphyseal plate it acts as a guard there will be a lot of hemorrhage and necrosis it becomes softened but there will be gritty areas because it is basically a bony there are different variants of it it can be classical it can be the paraosteal or periosteal it can be telangiectectic etc and microscopically these are all the tumor cells the dark ones are the tumor cells and the pale pink ribbon like areas are the tumor osteoid just like the original slide that i showed you you find that the tumor is being laid down bone is being laid down by the tumor cells hence the name osteogenic sarcoma here also there can be some giant cells pleomorphism etc but the giant cells will not be having 50 to 100 nuclei as in a case of osteoplast this is a cordman strike so and finally we come back to the chart so there are three important tumors staring at us they are essay questions they are short notes mcqs can be asked whatsoever you should know the classification of the bone tumors the morphology and the microscopy these are our important sources of reference definitely kept for viva and x ray also may be kept as a chart whatsoever osteoclastoma 30 years club shaped expansive lesion so bubble appearance multiple multinucleated giant cells these are the sites of occurrence of the tumor heaving sarcoma it occurs in the diaphysis of the junction of the diaphysis and the metaphysis there is a parallel bone formation which is called as an onion skin appearance rosettes are very common over here and differential diagnosis will be other round cell tumor. PAS is used to demonstrate glycogen. Osteogenic sarcoma, you find that the tumor is very aggressive, breaks the bone, Cortman's triangle, and infiltrates the surrounding tissue. Epiphysis is intact. The tumor osteoid is being laid down by the tumor cells. They are pale, pink, and that is how you identify. Sometimes there can be multinucleated giant cells, but not so many nuclei as osteoclastoma. radiologically you see a cortman's triangle the common sites are these there can be what is called as a secondary osteosarcoma which can occur in a paget's disease or in osteomyelitis thank you for your patience